here's an example on how to find out the relative cumulative frequency uh, distribution, filling out a table, and also uh, an example of how you actually turn that histogram into an ogive. Um, to begin with, I've got an example that I just posted um, on the Declaration of Independence Signers. It's from my textbook, and uh, first thing I did is I typed in all of the ages under list one until I had all 55 signers. So why don't you do that? And then once that's done, a nice thing to do is actually to sort the list from lowest to highest. So I'll go to um, stat and then slide to or slide down to sort A. Tell my calculator what list I want to sort. So sort A and then second, sort list one. Tells me it did it. And go back to the list. And you can see that it sorted them from the youngest all the way to the oldest. So that's one thing that you want to get first of all is the range. Figure out the class width. The formula is the range divided by how many bars. So suppose we wanted to get seven bars on our histogram. Uh, the range, the oldest signer was 70 years old, and the youngest was 27. So just work that out. Uh, 70, divi 70 minus 27 divided by 7. It's 43 divided by 7, which comes out to be 6.5. One, four, three, and with these questions here, you always round up to the next highest integer. So our bars will be seven thick. So we start with the youngest signer here and keep on adding seven to their age. I'm going to start here. I'm going to give myself some cushion on either side. As you can see, I'm shooting for seven bars, but I'm going to make nine, create nine different classes here for my table. So I'm going up by seven, so it's easy enough. So it could be 34, and then another seven after that is 41, 48, 55, 62, 69, 76. I also want to back it up by 7 to 20 years old. Once I have those, those set up with jumps of 7 each time, then I fill in the missing class, so uh, the missing part of the interval, so 20 to 26, 27 to 33, and so on. So just filling those out. Also noticing those are jumping up by 7s as well. So this guarantees us that our bars are set are all the same width, they're all seven thick. Now once that's done, we need to find out how many are in each category. And that's kind of nice to have the list in order, because now I can just look at my list and go down and find out how many are in this range. There's zero. Between 27 and 33. There are quite a few. There were seven signers. Between 34 and 40, quite a few. We got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen. Between 41 and 47, I'm just counting them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15. And just work your way through the table like that. So between 48 and 54, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11. From 55 to 61, 1, 2, 3, only three. 
from 62 to 68. 1, 2, 3, only 3, and only one there at 69. Oh, actually 70 also. How can I forget Benjamin Franklin? He probably was the 70-year-old, and there were none in this category. Once you have the frequency set up, the relative frequency is easy to determine. It's just the number and the frequency divided by the grand total. So you can write those as fractions. You could also write those as percents. If you write them as a fraction, they're exact, which is nice. The cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency is just adding up each of the bars that appear from before, or each of the intervals that appear from before. So we start off with 0 and 7, and then in this category here, we're going to include the 14, the 7, and the 0. So we're at a total of 21. We're going to keep on adding on each new bar to this grand total so that we eventually arrive at 55. That's a grand total number of signers. So adding another 15 would bring me to 36, adding an 11 would me to 47, to 50, to 53, to 55, and it stays at 55 there. So the cumulative relative frequency, again, that's just taking these totals here, and again, it's relative to how many were actually there, which is 55. So we're going to turn these into a percent. So 0 out of 55, 7 out of 55. 21 out of 55, and so on. All right, next up is turning those into percentages. When we do our histogram, we're going to want those turned into percentages. So um, if you want to pause the video, or I'll probably pause the video, so that um, I can get this all done real quick. This would be 0, 7 out of 55 is about 13%. Uh, 7 is about 38%. 47 divided by 55, we're looking at these totals going up, so 85%, 50 out of 55, it's about 91%, 53 is about 96%, and we're talking about 100%, or 1 is the proportion. All right, once that's done, we can turn that information into a histogram, and here's how. Well, in the interest of saving some time, I decided that instead of just doing the video on the board of showing me making the bar graph, I'll just show you my answer key. So um, there's two things that I wanted to show you. Number one was a relative frequency histogram, and that would look just like that. The percentages appear on the right-hand side, going from 0% all the way to 100%. And usually with those relative frequency histograms, you know, you won't really need the bars to go up very high because usually the percentages are quite low. So it would be a relative frequency histogram. Different from the frequency histogram, almost exclusively just because of the way that it's labeled. I mean, the difference between this and the frequency histogram is just the labeling that goes along the side. Um, as far as the cumulative relative frequency histogram, those would be the bars that you see, and that's just using the information from the last column of the table, and you can see I superimposed that red jagged line that goes through the corners of each of the steps along the way of that, of that graph, and that red line, that, that jagged red line is called the ogive, and it's helpful for a few reasons. Um, one reason 
is that, as, I, as I've shown right here, that you can actually take, like if you wanted to find the median, here's 50% right here, you could just read across and down and find that the median age somewhere between 41 and 47 for the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And you could even estimate that that would maybe be, let's say, 44 years old. Uh, unlike the box and whisker graph, the cumulative frequency histogram, or the ogive, can also help you find percentiles that are not just at the quarter marks. So you're not restricted to just the 25 percentile, the 50 percentile, the 75 percentile. If I'm interested in, you know, the si the 70th percentile, I can just read across there, find out where it hits that red line, follow it down like this, and I can make an estimation that the 70th percentile is somewhere in that range between 48 and 54, and I could even estimate that, let's say, 51. So that's the uh, long and short of how to develop those histograms, and you know, I guess there are some some uses for it. It's good to actually see different representations besides stat plots that include um, box plots or box and whisker graphs or stem and leaf graphs. You know, just seeing different ways to present the data. It can be very useful and I guess with those percentiles that's the main use of the ogive is to be able to locate strange percentiles like the 60th percentile.